Bonjour, French 2 students. This is your teaching lesson for lesson 13, pages 192 to 201 in your textbook. Again, I have some pictures here, but the purpose of the pictures is just to help you make sure that you know where we're at. Um, so you really do need to have your textbook out and be following along in your textbook. So on page 192 à la page 192, Unité 5 en ville, leçon 13, le français pratique la ville et la maison, leçon 14, week-end à Paris, leçon 15 au café de l'univers, leçon 16, mes voisins. So hopefully you remember that each unit in your textbook is separated into four lessons. Um, remember that the first lesson is always the heavy on vocabulary for the unit. So you'll have a lot of new vocabulary in this lesson that you need to know the meaning of and spelling of before you take your lesson quiz. The other lessons will focus more on grammar, although there may be some vocabulary. And remember, at the end of all four lessons, there is a unit test as well. Remember that your lesson quizzes do have listening portions on them, so it is important that you're doing your best to understand what you hear. So theme et objectif, visiting a French city. There are many things to do in a city. Places to visit, concerts to attend, sports to play. In this unit, you will learn to describe your city, its public buildings and places of interest, to ask for and give directions, to talk about the various places you go to during the week and on weekends, to describe your house or apartment. You will also be able to discuss your future plans and say what you are going to do, to talk about your friends and their families. In the picture that you see on page 193 in your textbook, okay, of the students in the park in front of the building, um, the teens are at La Place de Vosges in Paris. The buildings of stone and faux brick are home to many famous people, such, were home to many famous people, such as Richelieu and Victor Hugo. People can visit the museum at Mais at Museum at Maison de Victor Hugo, see Splash de Vosges, where he lived from 1832 to 1848. So in that picture there that you see, those buildings have existed for quite some time. In fact, Victor Hugo lived in one of those buildings from 1832 to 1848. So again, that's kind of an overview of this unit. Lesson 13 specifically, la ville et la maison. So this is going to be vocabulary related to town and your house. Accent sur les villes françaises. So French towns. And as a side note, a little review, right? The fact that française ends with an ES tells you that ville is feminine and plural. And again, those are little things that as French 2 students you should be picking up on. So today 80% of the French population lives in cities and their surrounding suburbs. So they're saying 8 out of 10 people live in a city or surrounding suburbs. Um, French cities have a long history. Paris, Lyon, Marseille, and Nice were founded well over 2,000 years ago. So remember, as a country, right, um, we have only been a country for a couple hundred years. These are cities that have existed as a city for over 2,000 years. So again, this history is quite a bit more than maybe what the history that we know of or um, keep track of here in the United States. Cities in France differ in urban design from cities in the United States. So what they're saying there is just cities are set up differently in France than they are in the United States. The downtown area, Le Centreville, is the historical district with buildings and monuments dating back several centuries. Usually no buildings are taller than six stories. With the many cafes, restaurants, stores, and movie houses, it is a very animated area that attracts many young people. So first off about the taller than six stories, 
That would be because these areas were built prior to um, elevators. And so at that time, that was sort of the limit of how many sets of stairs people were willing to climb. And then what do they mean by very animated? They just mean it's lively. There's a lot going on. So these are areas where there's always people out and about and there's a lot going on all the time. The suburbs, La Belle is where the tall apartment buildings and office buildings are located. Young people who live in the Parisian suburbs often get together in the local shopping mall, Le Centre Commercial, which offers shops, cafes, and cinemas. So again, they're just saying that the suburbs are newer, and as a result, there are tall apartment buildings that are going to have um, elevators in them, and that people, young people like you, enjoy going to a mall just like you do. So on page 195, we have Ici à Tours. So this is introducing us to one of the cities in France, which is Tours. Tours est une ville de 200 000 habitants, située à 200 km au sud-ouest de Paris. C'est une ville française typique. So it's saying here in Tours, and if you look at the map on the bottom of page 194, that can kind of help you with some of figuring out what some of this is saying. So it's telling us that Tours is a town of 200,000 people situated 200 kilometers southwest of Paris. It's a typical French town. So they introduce us or show us a couple of the places in this town. We have L'Hôtel de Ville. Au centre, il y a l'Hôtel de Ville qui est le bâtiment administratif principal. C'est ici que les gens viennent se marier. So, in the middle of town, there is the city hall, which is the main administrative building. It's here that young or that people come to get married. So, again, this is sort of like um, where your city or county offices would be, a building that has all of those in it. Okay, and it's called L'Hôtel de Ville. La Place Plumereau. Okay. So this is a place that's in tour. La Place Plumereau est située dans un quartier très ancien. Il y a beaucoup de maisons historiques et aussi beaucoup de cafés où viennent les gens de tour. C'est un endroit très animé. So Plumereau Place is situated in a very old district. There are a lot of historic houses and also a lot of cafes where the young people of Tours come. Okay, It's a very animated place. So again, they're kind of talking about lively. There's a lot of people around doing things. Le Chateau de Tours. Um, comme beaucoup de villes françaises, Tours a un château historique. Ce château est une ancienne fortress royale. Aujourd'hui, c'est un bâtiment administratif. So... The Tour Castle, like a lot of French towns, Tours has a historic castle. This castle is a former royal fortress. Today, it's an administrative building. So royal fortress means that it used to be used by kings and queens. Une maison près de Tours. Les Français qui n'habitent pas dans le centre-ville préfèrent habiter dans une maison individuelle. Cette maison de la région de Tours a deux étages. So this is a house near Tours. And the French who don't live in the downtown area prefer to live in an individual house. This house of the region of Tours has two floors. So again, remember how your textbook is set up. Yellow boxes are new vocabulary. You need to know the meaning and spelling of the vocabulary in these yellow boxes. This box is titled Où habite tu? So where do you live? And how to talk about where one lives. S'il vous plaît, répétez Où habite tu? J'habite à Tours. À Verneuve. Dans une grande ville, dans un petit village, 
dans un joli quartier, dans une rue intéressante. So, again, these first two here are examples of how you say the town you live in. So, if you wanted to say you lived in Remus, you would say, J'habite à Remus, okay, or whatever town you live in. Um, these are kind of other ways you might describe that town. So, in a large town, in a small village, in a pretty neighborhood, um, on an interesting street. And again, notice, interessant ends in that E because un rue is feminine and singular. Our next question, s'il vous plaît, répétez, quelle est ton adresse? So that's asking, what is your address? And notice, they write their address a little bit differently. They write the number with a comma after it and then the name of the street. And the street name comes after the road, like road or avenue or boulevard. So for example, the school's address would be 3226 Rue Arthur. Okay, so they write their addresses a little bit differently. So again, we see the words for um, une avenue, une rue, and un boulevard. All right, we also have a note culturelle on this page, and one of the things you're going to notice that's changed here in units one through four in your textbook, the note culturelles were in English. Now, the note culturelles have switched over to French. This information still will show up on your lesson, um, your unit tests as culture questions. So we do need to kind of take a look at this. So we have le nom des rues. So this one is about the names of streets. En France, les rues ont très souvent le nom de personnes célèbres, en particulier écrivains, artistes et personnalités politiques. So hopefully you can kind of work through this translation. The little ones that have a circle by it, those are words that you haven't learned yet, and they're going to be down at the bottom. And your book is really consistent about doing this. They also do this on tests and quizzes. So if they use some um, words that they don't, you haven't learned yet, they'll have this little circle around by it, and it'll be down um, for you. So this is saying, in France, the roads very often have the name of famous people. In particular, writers, artists, and pol political personalities or politicians. And then they have two examples. We have Victor Hugo, et un très grand poète. Il a aussi écrit Les Miserables, qui a inspiré une comédie musicale moderne. Lafayette, et un aristocrate français, Ami de George Washington, il a joué un rôle important pendant la Révolution américaine. So first about Victor Hugo, who lived from 1802 to 1885. He is, Victor Hugo is a very great poet. Here, grand doesn't mean large, it means great. He also wrote Les Miserables, which inspired a modern musical comedy. So... I wouldn't call Les Miserables a modern musical comedy, um, but Les Miserables is um, something that's been made into a movie. Just a couple years ago, there was a movie with Hugh Jackman in it. It is indeed a musical. Um, wouldn't be a bad movie for you to watch. However, I will warn you um, that there is some graphic... There's a rape scene in it that is portrayed. So if that's not something that your parents would allow you to watch, then that might not be a good choice. But it does do a nice job of giving you an idea of what it was like to live in France at that time. So again, if you're looking for a movie and your parents aren't going to object to that type of movie, um, it might be a good movie to watch. Lafayette. The other one is about Lafayette, who lived from 1757 to 1834. Lafayette is a French aristocrat, um, friend of George Washington. He played an important role during the American Revolution. So hopefully you've heard of Lafayette. He helped the um, kind of get the French involved when we were fighting um, 
the American Revolution for our independence from England. Um, and he helped because he was a friend, friend of George Washington. So again, you see those street signs there. One thing that's different about street signs in France, so those signs, that's what the street signs look like, and they put them on the sides of the buildings. So unlike here in the United States where we kind of look for a pole near the corner, in France, to find the street name, you're going to be looking at the sides of the buildings on the corner, and they'll be up there. All right, so continuing with some new vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary ma ville. So we see vocabulary about how to talk about one's hometown. And this should look familiar because quite a bit of this is on your current vocabulary list as well. So we have dans ma rue, il y a un hôtel, un café, un restaurant, un supermarché, un magasin. Dans mon quartier, il y a aussi un cinéma, une école, une église, un centre commercial. So this first part is saying, um, on my street there is, right? Ilia means there is. And an hotel is a hotel, just like you think of traditionally as a hotel. Un café, a café. Un restaurant, a restaurant. Un supermarché, a supermarket. And un magasin is just the generic word, word for a store. So this is just the generic word for a store. A comment here. Um, I see un restaurant misspelled a lot, just so that you know. Restaurant is spelled the same way in French and in English. So if you do misspell it in French, it probably means you're also misspelling it in English. So then we have the in my neighborhood there is, okay? And we have un cinema, which is a movie theater. Une école, which is a school. Une église, which is a church and on Centre Commercial, which is a mall or shopping center. So, s'il vous plaît, répétez, un hôtel, un café, un restaurant, un supermarché, un magasin, un cinéma, une école, une église, un centre commercial. Remember when we see un, it's telling us that the noun is masculine. And when we see an un, it's telling you that the noun is feminine. Remember that is part of learning this vocabulary and also part of what has to be included on your vocabulary quizzes. You have to use an un or an un or a le and a la, or a la with all of your words, your nouns. All right, continuing there, we have dans ma ville, il y a une bibliothèque, un théâtre, un musée, un hôpital. Il y a aussi une piscine, un parc, un stade, une plage. So again, we have in my town, there is une bibliothèque. This is a library. On Teatra, this is a theater, not like a movie theater, but like a theater that has a stage and where people would perform live. A musée is a museum. An hôpital is a hospital. Il y a aussi, there is also, une piscine, that's a pool. Un parc, a park. Un stade, a stadium. And un plage, a beach. So again, part of learning this vocabulary is learning the un or the un with it so you know whether it's masculine or feminine. S'il vous plaît, répétez un bibliothèque, un théâtre, un musée, un hôpital, un piscine, un parc, un stade, Un plage. So again, all of this vocabulary, you need to know what it means. You need to know how to spell it. You need to know the un and the un with it. Remember when you spell it, that includes your accent marks being correct. Okay, so spelling these words without their accent marks means that you have misspelled them. So again, 
best that you start practicing spelling and writing and what these mean right away. All right, continuing to page 199 where we have C, vocab, say, vocabulaire, pour demande en renseignement, how to ask for directions. So we have pardon, monsieur, excusez-moi, madame, mademoiselle, où est l'hôtel Normandie? Il est dans la rue Jean Moulin. Où est-ce qu'il y a un café? Il y a un café à rue Saint-Paul, Boulevard Massina, Avenue de Lyon. Où est-ce? Est-ce que c'est loin? Non, ce n'est pas loin, c'est près. C'est à gauche, c'est à droite, c'est tout droit. Tournez à gauche, tournez à droite, continuez tout droit. Merci beaucoup. So again, they kind of highlight or they bold, if you will, the kind of new vocabulary here, but kind of working through what this is saying. This is saying, um, pardon or excuse me, sir, Mrs., miss, where is the Normandy Hotel? It is on Jean Moulin Street. Where is there a cafe? There is a cafe on... Uh, on St. Paul Street, on Messina Boulevard, on Lyon Avenue. Where is it? Is it far? No, it's not far. It's nearby. It's to the left. It's to the right. It's straight ahead. Turn, turn, turn is turn. Turn to the left. Turn to the right. Continue straight ahead. Thank you very much. So again, this is vocabulary you would use um, if you are um, trying to get around a town. Some cultural notes here. Jean Moulin okay, um, lived from 1899 to 1943. He was a hero of the French resistance against the Nazi occupation in World War II. And Massina, um, lived from 1758 to 1817, was one of Napoleon's marshals. So those are um, well-known people. So we're going to do exercise five out loud uh, so that you have a chance to kind of practice saying these in your head, or even you can say them out loud, okay? So, on Ville, a tourist who is visiting a French city asks a local resident how to get to the following places. Act out the dialogues. So we have, pardon, mademoiselle or monsieur, où est le café de la poste? Le café de la poste, il est dans la rue Pascal. Où est-ce? Continue tu droit. Merci, mademoiselle or monsieur. So, for this example, right, the picture you see in your book, you see it's called café de la poste. That's the kind of first thing that's in this position. Oops. Um, okay, so that's kind of telling you what goes here and here, okay? So that's number one. Those are the number ones, okay? Um, this part here, right? This is giving you the information that you need for where it is. And then the arrow, okay? That's how you get this information here. So that's what number three is giving you. So, if you would try number one, just saying it out loud to yourself. Again, if you need more time than I give you, you can pause your video. So, for number one, you should end up with, Pardon, mademoiselle, où est l'hôtel continental? L'hôtel continental, il est dans l'avenue Victor Hugo. Où est-ce? Tournez à droite. Merci, mademoiselle. So, now try number two, numéro deux. Pardon, monsieur, où est le café Le Bistro? Le café Le Bistro, il est dans la rue Soli. Où est-ce? Tournez à gauche. Merci, monsieur. Try number three. Pardon, mademoiselle, où est l'hôtel Terminus? L'hôtel Terminus, il est dans la rue Molière. Où est-ce? Tournez à gauche. Merci, mademoiselle. 
Try number numero quatre, number four. Pardon, monsieur. Où est le restaurant chez Jean? Le restaurant chez Jean, il est dans l'avenue Belcourt. Où est-ce? Continuez tout droit. Merci, monsieur. And try number five. Pardon, mademoiselle. Où est le cinéma luxe? Le cinéma luxe, il est dans la rue Massina. Où est-ce? Tournez à droite. Merci, mademoiselle. And some of these names here. Um, the Pascal, Rue Pascal, was named after Blaise Pascal, who lived from 1623 to 1662. He was a mathematician and philosopher. The Duke de Sully lived from 1559 to 1641, and he was a finance minister of Henry IV. And Molière, who lived from 1622 to 1673, was a classical author and a writer of comedies. So again, many of those streets are named after famous people. All right, Part D, vocabulary, ma maison. How to describe one's home. Si vous plaît, répétez, j'habite dans une maison, un appartement, un immeuble. Ma maison est moderne, confortable. Ma chambre est en haut, en bas. So again, kind of working through this, right? I live in, and if you live in a house, you'd say une maison. If you live in an apartment, un appartement. And if you live in an apartment building, you could say un immeuble. Um, my house is, modern is modern. Or my apartment is, and you could say comfortable or modern. It doesn't matter which one. My bedroom is, Upstairs or downstairs. S'il vous plaît, répétez une maison, un appartement, un immeuble, moderne, confortable, en haut, en bas. And again, remember, these are adjectives. So these are describing words. So we see a picture of la maison, and we have le garage, le jardin, une chambre, une salle de bain, les toilettes, le salon, la cuisine, and la salle à manger. And again, this should look familiar. It's on your vocabulary list, right? So le garage is the garage. Le jardin is really yard. I know it looks like the word garden, but it is the word for a yard. Une chambre is a bedroom. Une salle de bain is a bathroom. Les toilettes is the toilets. The toilet. Le salon is the living room. La salle à manger is the dining room. And la cuisine is the kitchen. S'il vous plaît, répétez la maison. Le garage. Le jardin. Une chambre, une salle de bain, les toilettes, la cuisine, la salle à manger, le salon. So remember where we see la, that's telling us it's feminine. Le tells us it's masculine. If instead of saying the, we wanted to say a or an, then remember, um, las would become uns and lus would become un. So it depends upon which you want to say of whether you should use la or un or le or un. So uh, about les toilettes, because that seems a little weird to us, right? That the toilet's not in the bathroom. Um, you have to keep in mind that in old parts of France, right? Those cities that were 2,000 years old. Some of the buildings were built prior to modern plumbing. 
So even in those buildings that were built prior to modern plumbing, they would have had a room that had a bathtub in it so that they could um, fill up their bathtub with water, hot water with a, from a stove to take a bath. However, they didn't have a spot for toilets, so oftentimes those rooms were big enough for the bathtub and um, maybe like a spot to put a sink in when modern plumbing came along, but they weren't always big enough for toilets. So a lot of times to retrofit those buildings, they would take a closet, something that had been a closet, and they would turn it into a toilet. So older homes sometimes have a separate room from the bathroom that has just the toilet in it. Modern homes in France are going to be built like modern homes in the United States where they're going to have a bathroom that has a toilet in it, okay? But again, this is just showing to give you that perspective, So you see the comparison cultural in traditional French homes, the toilet or double WC is in a small room separate from the main bathroom. So those are traditional, typically older homes. Let's look at exercise eight. Où sont-ils? From what the following people are doing, guess where they are in or around the house. So the example, Madame Martin. Repair la voiture. So what you're supposed to do here is say, read the sentence and based on the sentence decide where is this person. So if Madame Martin, Mrs. Martin is repairing the car, she's probably in the garage. So it becomes elle est dans le garage. So we're going to use the verb être for all of these, okay, which means remember to be. The forms of être, remember, are je suis. To a, il or l, a, nu, som, vous, et, an il and l pluriel, sont. So we're going to use the same subject in the sentence we say as the subject of the sentence, right? So Madame Martin, if I didn't want to say her name again, I'd use L. For new, the subject of the sentence we say is going to be new, and so forth. We're going to use the correct form of the verb etre, and then we're going to say where these people are. So go ahead and try number one on your own out loud right now, and then I will say what it should be. So number one, we have new denon. So you should have had, nous sommes dans la salle à manger. Okay, so that don is going to be in all of our sentences. All right, number two, to regard la télé. Tu es dans le salon. Numéro trois, Antoine et Juliette jouent au frisbee. Ils sont dans le jardin. Numéro 4. J'étudie le français. Je suis dans ma chambre. Or you can have je suis dans le salon, depending upon where you do your French. Numéro 5. Monsieur Martin prépare le dîner. Il est dans la cuisine. Numéro 6. Henri se lave. Il est dans la salle de bain. Numéro 7. Ma soeur téléphone à son copain. Elle est dans le salon. Again, if you need a little more time, you can pause it so you have more time to respond. So your homework is on page 201, exercise 8. So we just did this out loud. Remember, you're going to write like this example. You're going to write those sentences on your paper. Now, for your homework, you have two choices about how you choose to do this. Probably the easiest way is to open up a Google Doc and type it up, okay? So um, if you're going to do Google Docs, 
I'd like you to title um, the doc itself with your last name and homework number. So if I was doing this homework, I would call this Krem Schreider number one. Now, I still want you, um, whether you're handwriting out your paper or typing it in Google Docs, I still want you at the top of your paper to have your first and last name, the date, the class period. So are you in... Um, second period or fifth period or virtual and then the homework assignment and more than just the number right you're gonna write that it's page 2018 now you can type it your other choice for turning it in is that you are still welcome to hand write it out so if you choose to hand write this out on a piece of paper that's fine but then you're gonna have to take a picture of it and upload that picture for the assignment in Google Classroom. So the only acceptable way to turn in assignments for everyone, whether you're a hybrid learner or a virtual learner, is to submit it in Google Classroom for the assignment. So again, probably easiest if you just type it up for a Google Doc because it's really easy to attach it. If you don't like to type, you can handwrite it, but that's going to mean that you're going to have to take a picture of it, get that picture into your Google Drive, your school Google Drive, and then attach that picture for the assignment. You need to make sure that I can read the picture. Now, you're going to turn in your assignment after you've corrected it. So in Google Classroom, at 7 p.m., there's a section on our Google Classroom page that says um, homework answer keys. At 7 p.m., the day that an assignment has been assigned, that answer key will pop up. And you need to check your work before you turn it in. I should see evidence of you having fixed it, okay? Now, a side note also, for those of you who are choosing to handwrite, I really suggest you type. Because when you take assessments, they will be done through Google Forms. And you have to type everything. Not only that, on your classroom page, there is under General Classroom Resources, there is a material about how to install a keyboard because to type in Google Forms, you have to install an international keyboard on your Chromebook. So realistically, in my opinion, the best way for you to do your homework is to type it using that international keyboard so that you have a chance to practice with that so that the first time you're trying to use that international keyboard, you don't want that very first time to be when you're taking a test or a quiz. So again, it's your choice. Just know that if you're choosing to handwrite it, then you are still gonna have to figure out how to type things using your keyboard on your Chromebook, okay, when you take quizzes and tests and you have to be able to get the accent marks. And that um, material in Google Classroom, that is called, it, like I said, it's under your, um, your general class resources on your classwork tab. Um, that is called Accent Marks and International Keyboard. And when you click on that, it's going to give you, it gives you a PDF about how to do that it, that walks you through how to it's, do those things on your Chromebook. And it also has a YouTube video that I made for you where I do that on my personal Chromebook and show you how to get accent marks in Google Docs. So you really need to think about watching that video before you do your homework. Au revoir. Adieu.